Good afternoon, Columbia City Manager Teresa Wilson. Uh, as committed, the City of Columbia is going to continue to have regular updates and briefings um, as Hurricane Florence is upon us. We have again invited all of our community partners and agencies to give any pertinent updates as well. Today we hope to be a bit more abbreviated as obviously our first responders are in the field working. Um, we want to focus on the public safety and public works aspects of what is going on in our community and to really give a big thank you and shout out to the citizens of Columbia and Richland County for adhering to the warnings, for making sure that they are um, following all the safety protocol that we've continued to give and staying off the streets. Um, we know sometimes it can be a bit of a misconception when you don't see as much rain, but there has certainly been a lot of wind um, and we want to continue to drive that point home that we certainly would um, um, advise that you stay home during this period of weather uncertainty. So with that, I'll hand off to Mayor Benjamin for some uh, opening comments. We're going to quickly move into updates from our public safety officials and public works officials and then any other additional comments, particularly from um, the United Way of the Midlands and transitions because we wanted to address any concerns the public might have for our most vulnerable citizens and homeless population that there have certainly been um, lots of activity and um, the, the right um, um, protocol being put in place for them as well. Thank you. Sure. And thank you. As the uh, city manager mentioned, we're going to have a, a, a much tighter briefing today. Keep it as brief as possible. We want to make sure everyone, um, including our, our staff, has a chance to get home and be with their families if the weather does, in fact, turn. I would say our primary concern is um, with um, uh, the families along the coast of North and South Carolina have lost uh, uh, their lives and lost their loved ones and sig suffered significant uh, property damage. We keep them in our prayers, and we're going to continue to do everything we can uh, here in the Midlands to make sure that our citizens uh, stay safe. Um, everyone has a role in making sure that that happens. We we'll encourage uh, you, if you don't have to go out, stay home. Stay home. Enjoy this time with your family. Uh, listen to the uh, admonitions of our public safety professionals, but we've learned uh, through experience that constantly sharing information, recognizing that we all get our information from different sources at different times and in different ways right now is the key. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that at the very least we had our, our first responders and all of our subject matter experts here to share information. We're surrounded uh, here today uh, with our representatives from, from um, every uh, sector you can imagine. Our representatives from Congressman Clyburn's office and Congressman Wilson's office, um, all of our county council uh, members and our, our chair of, of the county, of county council. Uh, we have uh, Pimetta Health and our, our leaders from the Columbia uh, Chamber of Commerce, the City Center Partnership, uh, and obviously uh, representatives from the Comet uh, as, as well um, have been working with us, as Ms. Wilson mentioned, uh, closely with CPD and all of our homeless services providers. Uh, we have our, the CEO of the United Way and also the CEO of Transitions uh, here with us here today. And I think I've touched on, on everyone, of course, um, and uh, even on the weekend, we have our education professionals, our superintendents of Richmond 1 and Richmond 2 who have been doing uh, what they always do, uh, meeting the needs of, of, of our entire community, uh, feeding our children, even though school's out, and meeting our educational needs uh, while our children are, are not in school. Um, that being said, we're going to move on through the agenda. I'm going to ask Police Chief Skip Holbrook uh, to come up and give us a quick update. Good afternoon. Briefly, um, reiterate what Ms. Wilson said. Thank you to our citizens. Um, you heeded our warnings. You stayed off the street. It's allowed us to get where we need to be expeditiously, take care of um, public safety matters. Um, our status is um, everything's normal. Um, we, we will continue to be up staff through the evening. We do expect some, uh, you know, a continuation of some wind and, and strong, strong wind and rain. Um, but we are not experiencing any remarkable calls for service at this this time. Not anything that was unplanned. Thank you. Sure, Fly. Quiet night in the county last night. Um, people are staying in, which is which is a good thing. Our public safety teams are ready to respond. Uh, I do want to thank the governor and our adjutant general for providing the South Carolina State Guard and the military police. They've been positioned at our shelters and providing security there, which allows us to have more deputies on the road. So we're able to 
respond to emergencies, uh, and we're also able to protect property. So that has tremendously helped us out. I know two days ago I said that we have an army when we put us all together. That's not quite right. We've got a Navy because we've got boats. We've got an Air Force because we've got aircraft. So we're prepared. And if the Marines need to be called out, Chief Holbrook and Chief Jenkins are ready to go. So <laughs> we're prepared. You know, your public safety is there. We're ready. And uh, we've got the equipment and personnel. So again, thank you, everybody, for listening to us, uh, continuing to heed these warnings. We're not out of the trouble yet. So, you know, let's, let's all be safe. Jenkins. I, I too want to reiterate, just say thank you to, thank you to the public uh, for just heeding the warnings and staying off the road. That really makes our job a whole lot easier. Uh, we will continue to be staffed up. Uh, we still have our SAW team and our, um, our water rescue team um, in, in place, and we'll continue to have that in place uh, throughout this event. So, you know, we haven't had many calls for service as far as weather related. We did have a uh, structure fire early this morning, but um, that was not a weather related um, incident. So, again, thank you all for just, just doing what we've asked you to do, and we'll continue to uh, serve you as we should. Assistant City Manager for Water, Clint Chile. Good afternoon. Um, we are faring very well right now from a water and uh, wastewater perspective, uh, distribution and collection. Um, we've had a few minor power interruptions at some of our pump stations, but SCNG has been remarkable in their response to us and um, very helpful to get things back running. Um, we're monitoring our wastewater collection system. We've had no sanitary sewer overflows to date. Um, we've had no water main breaks or service interruptions, so we're um, very pleased with that so far. The canal is stable. We're managing the water levels appropriately and um, feel really, really good uh, about our position right now, but are inspecting that routinely and uh, continue with our level of concern about high winds and, and any heavy precipitation. From a, a customer care perspective, our uh, call volume is relatively low right now, but I encourage our customers, if you do have um, any issues that are non-emergency, to call our customer care hotline that's manned 24-7. Um, you can reach that at 803-545-3300. And again, I'd like to thank our team for and our staff for working so hard to respond to the challenges that we've seen so far. Thank you. All right, we'll get Director Tinsley. Just a real quick update on EOC operations. Uh, the weather right now, currently Florence has been downgraded to a tropical uh, storm. The winds are 45 miles per hour. Moving north, uh, moving west at two miles per hour, it's just off of Myrtle Beach, about 40 miles. An update on our situation in the EOC, we are continuing to monitor. Uh, our folks are in place. Uh, we've had some isolated power outages here in the city. Uh, utility crews are working on those to make sure they're getting up in place. As we said, some of our public safety partners have already said, call volume is, is normal, but we stand ready to go. Thank you. And I think um, we're going um, to um, have a partner agency speak. Uh, uh, one, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Robert Anderson. I apologize, Robert. Director of Public, Director of public Works, I apologize. Sorry, brother. That's fine. Thank you. We're also receiving some small call volumes. We want to thank the citizens for staying off the street, but we also want to thank them for notifying us. We've had about 20 calls for tree-related issues right now. Just got off the phone with our forestry superintendent, and we only have one road blocked, and the crews are there now. Our street division crews are rotating throughout the city right now. They are making sure that any debris that gets in front of the low-lying storm drains are clean. And also our traffic engineering is experiencing some issues right now with some flashing traffic lights. And the power outages are causing some concerns at the traffic lights. So we want to remind everybody two safety concerns once again. If you see a tree down, assume that there may be a power line in it and let our professionals take care of it. Call the 545-3300 number. And if you come up to a traffic light that is not functioning at all or has flashing lights, treat it as a four-way stop. Once the power comes back on and once our crews respond, we'll get them back on as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And I um, want to uh, admonish everyone again uh, in our 11 o'clock briefing. City manager was uh, careful enough to make sure we all realize we are not close to out of the woods. I know that we all are expecting a very difficult weather. This is obviously better weather than we expected at this point, um, but we've got a long way to go. Uh, before we shift into um, the next phase. Uh, and obviously, if we're, if, we're, if we're blessed to make it through this storm, 
then as a community, we'll come together and make sure we, um, we immediately meet the needs of our, of our friends and families uh, most affected by the storm in other parts of the state and in North Carolina. I uh, did also want to make sure everyone had the S, C, E, and G uh, phone number. Uh, if, you, if you see some down power lines, to contact them at 888-333-4465. Uh, you can also, of course, go online to report an outage at SCEG.com slash storm. Um, as of 11 o'clock, there were 1,419 uh, folks without power in Richland County, 248 of them. And in Columbia, most of them uh, focused in the um, uh, southeast uh, to the eastern side of, of town, and um, I, I know the SCNG is working uh, diligently to, to get those folks back up and running. I uh, want to shift to some of our, our partner agencies to, to share uh, any uh, specific updates. No one's compelled to speak, but if there's something that you want to make sure the public has uh, information, um, let's make sure uh, that they have it. Uh, Madam Chair, did you Thank want to say you. something? Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Joyce Dickerson, Chair of Richland County. I want on behalf of and on behalf of Richland County, I have several of my colleagues here with me today, and we are here to let you know that we are constantly uh, um, in com communications with the sheriff and with the mayor and all of the city officials to make sure that we are working together to make sure that this county and this city is safe. Um, and therefore, we've got lots of people in the, in the area working in public works, doing an assessment of the area throughout the county, and we just want you to know that we are here to make sure to show our support to all of us, showing that we are all working together to make sure that our citizens are safe. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, Dr. Davis, that's Richmond, too. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just as an update, uh, at about 2 p.m. on tomorrow, the Richland 2 uh, executive staff and superintendent's cabinet will be holding a meeting a uh, phone conference to discuss and assess the situations in our particular school district and area so that we can provide you with information uh, relatively quickly as it relates to Monday. But just as a reminder, the school districts are closed uh, by the order of the governor, and so if that order is not lifted, we would not have an opportunity to open schools on Monday. Should schools not open on Monday, but it is safe to continue to have lunch services provided for our students, we will continue to provide lunch services at both Dent Middle School and Ridgeview High School. Um, as conditions continue to improve, we'll continue to assess those conditions by sending out our operations and logistics team as well as our security uh, forces to look at uh, our property and our schools and structures to make sure those uh, places are safe and secure for our students as well as our roads and pathways to ensure that our students get to and from school <coughs> safely. And again, I would just like to thank all of the members of the district family, our <coughs> teachers, parents, students. Um, community partners for all that they've done to ensure that everyone stays safe and secure. If you have an opportunity to check on your neighbors um, after you've taken care of your family, please do so to remember that we are all one family. Uh, special um, just thanks to our communications department for making sure that we stay up to date and we get that information out to you all in a timely manner, as well as our operations and logistics and security um, forces for making sure that everything is safe and secure and our financial department for making sure that all of our financial obligations and resources are taken care of and available to all of uh, our, our particular members of the school district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Willis, for what you want. Thank you, and good afternoon. Um, as Dr. Davis said, we will continue to monitor uh, the governor's um, order. Uh, we received information uh, early this afternoon with, uh, from the state superintendent's office that um, hopefully the governor may be making some announcement either later on today or tomorrow, and we too will continue to assess uh, our security and our, our safety and maintenance folks have been out, uh, of course, throughout this time monitoring. Uh, we did have in the single digits a uh, couple of folks that visited Lower Richland High School uh, during the storm, and our, our folks are there uh, now, and we'll continue to monitor. Uh, we had a uh, relatively large tree to fall. Uh, in, in, at Gaston Elementary, uh, no um, damage to the building, um, but we will continue to monitor, as we know, in the, in the county and, and, and throughout, the wind speeds vary. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor and, and check those things uh, as we go through. And again, uh, we encourage all of our parents to stay safe. I uh, appreciate uh, our teachers and administrators still providing some lessons and, and, and activities for students uh, as we go through this time and uh, again, monitor uh, the website and social media on updates as they come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Ando, uh, CEO of the Comet.
Good afternoon. Uh, we at the Comet, we're still uh, here to serve and provide assistance as necessary. We do have staff that is providing shuttles to help those get to evacuees, help the homeless get to shelters. So we're um, available for assistance to our local governments. Services still remain suspended. I will be communicating with local governments and the EOC to determine when it'll be safe for our buses to return back to service. We do encourage our passengers to continue to visit our website at catchthecomet.org or call our hotline at 803-255-7118 to get up to the minute information about when services could be potentially restored. We also have live customer service agents available at 803-255-7100. Thank you. Thank you. Colonel Curry from Transitions. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, all homeless shelters remain hope, uh, open in the Midlands area to include Transitions. So homeless folks are continuing to get services. I'd highlight too that we've been on an expanded capacity since Wednesday evening. And tonight we'll have the day center open at Transitions and tomorrow night as well to take expanded ca capacity there. Uh, we've served at lunchtime over 100 more meals than normal, so we're at 335. The Salvation Army has helped us tremendously uh, serving meals to those in need. I'd also highlight that Washington Street United Methodist Church has opened its doors to take people in. They had 14 people there as well last night who all were homeless. But again, they've opened their doors to take additional overflow there. So there's plenty of places to go. Uh, we're taking everyone at transitions, 18 or older, and, and we're opening our doors to get people in off the street. Uh, we've been coordinating with the city all week and with United Way, and we're grateful for their support. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Sarah Fawcett, the CEO of United Way of the Midlands. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to add a little bit to what Colonel Curry had to say. Uh, we have had volunteers out, street, out, street outreach uh, volunteers and workers out on the street since Monday, uh, letting our uh, people that are unsheltered know what vari various sheltering options are. We've had volunteers at Transitions that are uh, taking advantage of the opportunity to talk to people who ordinarily would not seek shelter to get a chance to screen them for potential housing options. And again, I want to thank uh, the Transitions and the Salvation Army for all that they've done for this population. Thank you. And I think it was stated earlier, but obviously we have representatives from both uh, Congressman Clyburn's office and, and Congressman Wilson's office who dialogue with the district directors for both Senator Graham and Senator Scott. Uh, we are all well, one big team here working together in the interest of, of, of all of our citizens. And um, again, I want to just point a personal privilege. I want to thank uh, Teresa Wilson and our entire team uh, at the city, uh, Director Tinsley, uh, we've been preparing uh, for this, working with all of our partners arm in arm. Uh, and I will tell you, it's not just when the storms come, um, but, but throughout the year we work together to make sure this is a, a place that enjoys a high quality of life. But when the times get, get, get tough and rough, uh, we, we all step up. We all step up and thankful for the, these men and women who make this place a special place to live. Uh, unless um, someone else has a report they, they want to give or, or a statement to make, we, we can go straight into um, uh, any questions that the press might have. Uh, I missed something? Oh, yeah, please, go ahead, dear. Okay, please. We uh, also want to additionally thank the Salvation Army again, not only for their work with the United Way of the Midlands and Transitions for our homeless community, but they are also providing meals for our first responders today. And any first responders, they should know that through their supervisors, but please go to the Public Works facility off of Slides Avenue. Um, Salvation Army does have meals prepared for you all today. We would continue to encourage the public to utilize the ColumbiaSC.net website. All of this information we just shared is there um, in a collective fashion at a, as an incident response briefing. So many of the numbers we've said, um, other agencies' information is linked from that website. And the customer care number, again, is 545-803-545-3300. 545-3300. Any questions? Um, I know we have one firefighter as of yesterday who suffered a rolled ankle, Chief Jenkins. Um, no broken bones. We're very thankful for that. I talked to our team this morning and everyone's continuing to focus on safety, pushing safety first with our first responders. We hope that is our only injury, Sarah. We pray for that. And one thing, one fire, but not storm related. Not storm related. Any questions? 
Yep, we've done a great job of, of staging barricades. Um, Robert, all of that still working as planned, so no, no roads. There there's power in prayer, okay? Keep on, <laughs> keep, on, keep on praying, keep on praying. Yeah, right, but um, let's make sure that, oh, you have to leave. Um, let's make sure that we remain vigilant and realize that we are not out of the, the woods yet. So everyone, uh, let's continue to follow protocols. We, 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 got, we got several more hours of this to go. I think it looks like, um, Harry, maybe through tomorrow, we'll, we'll have an idea as to uh, where we are. And, and I'm encouraged that the, what we've been able to stand up, the folks here and then all of our other partners, the Central Carolina Community Foundation, Columbia Cares, and everyone else, then we will have to shift into, into mode two and make sure that, again, our, our citizens uh, from other parts of the state in North Carolina who've been uh, uh, most gravely affected by this um, have what they need. And, uh, and we're certainly prepared uh, to step up and do that um, as, as, as we should. Is there a sense at this point, and at least a sense somewhat of relief in any way, shape, or form, even though it is early, that uh, perhaps the initial effects here in, locally have not been perhaps as serious as you might have first thought? I think it's fair to say this has probably, Greg, been the most unpredictable storm we've ever seen. So I think we're, you know, we're, we're, we're preparing for anything, uh, but still remaining very hopeful. And, um, and that's, that's probably our posture right now. I think several of the experts you've heard, whether it's been Clint Sheely with Columbia Water and, you know, staging for pumps just in case, um, cut it, get in the head gates secured ahead of time from a technical perspective, those type things with the canal, because obviously that is um, a, a vulnerability that we continue to live with. Um, so being, knowing that from what we experienced in 2015 and how we've now done the best we can until we have the final solution there. Um, you know, you have to learn from those experiences, obviously. But I would say, as Mayor Benjamin has continued to encourage us and, and this council to be very transparent with the public. And these regular updates, you know, to some might seem like overkill. But what I hear, and our safety and risk management director, uh, Demetrius Rump, was telling us last night in the grocery store, he was just there picking up something for his family, and all he got from the public was thank you for letting us know and keeping us informed. And so we thank you all, the, the media, for being our partner as well, because I think that was a great lesson that people want to be informed and they want to, that gives a certain reassurance to the public. Yeah. Can I say something to that? Absolutely. Um, I drove around the district. Jim Manning, Richmond County Council. Uh, I drove around District 8 and District 5 of County Council the Gills Creek watershed area, and the lake owner folks have done an exceptional job of lowering all those lakes in that area. And that's something that didn't get done as well as it should have last time. So again, that's the citizens stepping up and everybody stepping up, but that's a very significant difference. And you all, as you do your jobs informing the public, Y'all be safe too, all right? Uh, we, need, we need you back on the job on Monday too. Thank you. God bless.